Hi, everyone. My name, as Lucy said, is Jared Kawaiko, and uh, I am actually uh, working in the international recruitment uh, department here at BI, but also I am a full-time uh, student here as well in the Master of Science in uh, Business Analytics program. So I just want to welcome all of you for taking the time to, to join with me today and hear a little bit about what type of programs we have at BI Norwegian Business School. Uh, so first off, you're probably wondering, you know, who are we? Uh, BI Norwegian Business School, we are a, a leading European business school, uh, one of the top 1% with uh, triple accreditation. So that is pretty important. You can see it at the bottom right-hand corner there, A AACSB, Equus, and AM M AMBA. So I think that's very important when you are considering your alternatives abroad, that you find a school that has sort of that stamp of approval, uh, that sort of is a testament of their quality, something that we are very proud of and we work very hard to maintain. We are actually also the second largest business school in Europe. So, I mean, that, is, that means that we have a quite large student base, a lot, a lot of things going on here and an even much larger uh, alumni network that you can uh, take advantage of. So BI is uh, it's an independent, not, not, not profit uh, foundation. So we're just over 75 years old. Uh, we are actually also the main provider of research-based knowledge within business and management disciplines in Norway. So we are very much integrated within um, all fabrics of uh, Norwegian society. As I mentioned before, we do have 20,000 um, students and about three out of 10 of uh, the top senior executives in Norway are graduates from BI. So again, we have that established relationship and it's something that we rely on when it comes to positioning our students after their education here with us. In terms of uh, the campuses, uh, we have four campuses. Our master's programs are limited to two of them. So all of our master's programs are offered at the Oslo campus, which is the main campus. It houses around 12,000 students. And we have one master's program that is situated in uh, the Bergen campus as well. So for those of you who might be interested, that could also be an alternative. And we'll talk a bit about that a little later on. Uh, our research departments, BI has sort of climbed the rankings and established itself in, the, in several different fields of research. And as such, we have uh, eight different research departments and each one of these is sort of in charge of different programs. So you have the Department of Accounting, Auditing and Business Analytics, uh, Department of Communication and Culture, Department of Economics, Finance, Law and Governance, Leadership and Organizational Behavior, Marketing and Strategy. So as you see, it covers all uh, the different disciplines that uh, are of interest for the school. In terms of uh, international accreditation, so as I mentioned before, we do have that triple crown seal of approval, something we are, we are proud of. Uh, it's only 70 business schools worldwide that actually have it. So, I mean, I think it's um, just, again, a statement of quality and a commitment to sort of excellence. And uh, these, for those of you who don't know, these accreditations are actually based on both evaluations of us, but also the evaluations of the students on us. So I think that is that just speaks to the um, level of quality in terms of education that we provide. In terms of rankings, we have performed quite well in the Financial Times, the 2018 rankings, uh, as, as can be seen here, as well as the Economist rankings. So again, we are ensuring that we are out there and making sure that our students feel as though they've gotten their um, full money's worth when they come to, to BI Norwegian Business School. Uh, this environment, even though it's situated in, a, in Norway, it is actually a quite international environment as well. So on our, on our campuses, we have 1,800 international students. Uh, we are fortunate enough to have many partners around the world. So we have around just about 200 uh, partner schools and this is wonderful because you get the opportunity during your during your master's programs to go to various partner schools based on depending on which program you're taking so i think that's a fantastic opportunity for those of you who may want to see more of the world during this time and i think uh just in general in my experience uh it is quite cool to be able to live and experience different parts of the world. i myself uh, i come from or originally trinidad and tobago so i'm not norwegian Surprise, surprise. Uh, and I, uh, I, had the fort I was fortunate enough to study both in the US and then come 
to to know if for my master master's de degree. So I'm I'm very happy here, and I think the environment is very inclusive and very welcoming. And I think it's it's nice to be able to sort of try out new locations that you may not have otherwise considered um, as during your time as a student. So I implore you all to you know think outside the box. Do go just for the conventional, but really like look and try something new. It's a fantastic opportunity. Uh, so 20% of our, our Master of Science students are, are international, so one in five is not bad at all, so it makes for a very diverse uh, and mixed classroom. Uh, in terms of uh, the BBA students and stuff, we have about 60%, and 30% of our faculty are international. So again, it's a quite balanced uh, campus, so you do get that sort of Scandinavian flavor, but also in addition, you do get uh, a, a quite a, a good taste of what it's like to be in an international classroom environment and learning from professors from across the world. In, in addition to that, we have around 500 or so exchange students um, from our partner school. So it's, it, that's how it typically works. You know, they send students, we accept students. So I think it's a fantastic opportunity. And those of you who have been fortunate enough to be on exchange, you all know the value that seeing different uh, environments can bring to your educational experience. In terms of the international programs that we offer, so we offer two Bachelor of Science programs, as well as eight full-time master's programs. Uh, we're gonna be talking about the Master of Science programs today. Uh, that's going to be the focus, but just so that you know that we offer at all stages of, of the educational ladder, and we all, and as you can see here, we offer six PhD programs as well within various fields from the departments that were mentioned earlier. So typically, what can you expect of the Master of Science program? So it's traditionally two years, and it's a full-time program. So that's 120 ECTS credits. So it's broken up into four academic semesters. So you have that fall, spring, fall, spring. So it's two years. All of our programs, every single one of them, are research-based. So you will have a thesis in there that is worth 30 ECTS credits. So yeah, you can see approximately one-fourth of the total credits you'll be doing will be worked towards that thesis. And the work towards that thesis is concentrated in your last semester. Right? Here BI, we like to say that we have a sort of international focus with a Scandinavian perspective. Uh, I think it, it, and that is an important point to kind of drive home that, well, yes, while, whilst we do focus um, on the globe and what's happening around the world, we don't lose sort of this Scandinavian view of things. And I think that is quite um, uh, a good thing because you get a taste of what it is that makes this part of the world uh, quite unique. In addition to that, uh, we understand that ultimately, you know, everyone wants to go out there and get great jobs. And we do have uh, the different uh, a couple uh, program affiliations. So the finance program, for example, is um, affiliated with the CFA Institute uh, and the, our accounting special uh, majors are associated with the um, CIMA. So that's the Chartered Institute of Managerial Accountants, I believe. So that is definitely setting you up for these type of certifications that will make you even more attractive in uh, the job market. So now let's go over our uh, master programs. So there are quite a few of them here. And of course we can't go in depth into each of them, but I'll try to give you just a, a broad idea of um, what the programs are about. And I implore you afterwards to you know, go do your research, go check out our website, uh, and see, go a little bit deeper because you can actually get to see all the courses that will be done and um, get a better uh, view of what you can expect. So we have programs in applied economics, business analytics, that's the program I'm currently doing, uh, business, entrepreneurship and innovation, finance, leadership and organizational psychology, strategic marketing management, quantitative finance, and starting new next year, we have a joint master, master of science degree in marketing. So that's between BI and Luis. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a bit. So now let's get into it. So the applied economics program. So this program here is essentially, as it as it um, as the name tells you, it is a, it's, it's all about uh, economics. So if you have a real passion for economics, you want to learn more um, about really quantitative methods, 
this here is the program for you. So it does provide you with a very solid foundation. So let's say in your bachelor's degree, you had some economics courses. This here helps you go even further. So you will gain the analytical and quantitative skills that you need to understand different strategies, improve decision-making pro, uh, process based on statistics, right? So this program has a very uh, quantitative focus and it integrates data science techniques in courses to simulate, uh, 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 simulate uh, whether it be economic models or to analyze data. Right. So, again, the, the emphasis here is on strengthening your analytical skills and learn essentially a framework that you can use for analysis that can be applied to many different uh, areas. So it has a lot of interesting courses. I myself, during um, my program, I have uh, actually taken uh, uh, some, some economics courses and I can tell you that it, it, it's very thorough in the way they're presenting it and they try to as well make it a bit up, a bit more applied in that yes uh, I think in general uh, economics can, uh, degrees can be quite um, theoretical you know you have to learn a, learn a lot of base stuff but then you get to do that next step in this program where you get to apply it to real um, to real issues real things so you have is some cool courses like incentives wages and the labor markets where you get to sort of understand different um, the trends in the labor markets related to, for example, technological innovation or, or even uh, analyze ways, uh, wage discrimination uh, and human resource management, for example. You have, of course, general macroeconomics, you know, how all of these different economies around the world piece together uh, and operate simultaneously. And then, of course, in order to complement your, your actual skills, you have um, data and programming as a course as well. And the important, this is important because more and more you are required to have the skills when you enter the job market. So it's very, very important. Okay. So now we move on to the business, MSc in business program. So this here is our most customizable program, right? So you are going to receive with the MSc in business a very solid education uh, that gives you a wide variety of skills that you could kind of control which direction you want to go in. So you'll have in general for regardless of which specialization you choose, you're going to have a, a very strong general knowledge of um, economics and management. And then based on which, which specialization you go to, um, then you get more specific knowledge within that area. So just so that you can get a sense of how you can specialize, uh, you have the major in accounting and business control for those of you interested in accounting um, and related fields. Um, you have economics, right? You have the major in finance. You have the major in leadership and change. Leadership and change deals with, you know, these different psychological issues, so organizational behavior, et cetera, right? You have the major in logistics, operations, and supply chain management, a major in marketing, and a major in strategy, right? So how this works is that, so when you choose uh, a major, you're going to have a lot of courses related to that. But what is cool about the program is that you also get this opportunity to do up to, three up to three courses outside of your major. So you have to do three courses outside of your major. And this is where you can get to sort of combine fields with different interests. So, uh, for example, a very common thing is to see people choose um, to do the MSc in business and they will major in finance. And then they choose to have their specialization, the three courses. They may do all three in strategy or they may do um, one in economics and two in marketing. So you get to kind of customize um, exactly how, you, how your degree looks based on your own interests. And I think that is quite cool to get that um, level of uh, flexibility. So I think if you notice next to the... Um, major in economics and a major in finance. You see it's a little uh, asterisk there with QTEM. So the QTEM network is, is a, an additional program on top of it, whereby you, your program is a bit more quantitative. And what is cool about QTEM is that you get this opportunity to do uh, actually uh, three. You get three different institutions to work from. So what you do is you start your first semester with us at um, BI, then you go to the, your first, the first partner school within the QTEM network, and you get to work there. Then you move on 
to your second um, exchange onto another partner school where you do more courses there, and then you come back for your last semester with us. And what that allows for is that you get this chance to really kind of see different um, different countries. One, if you so if if you so choose, because the partners are spread out um, across um, Europe and have uh, in Australia and North America, etc. You also get a chance to explore different um, course combinations, so you can really target exactly which um, programs uh, you would like to do. Uh, so I think it's a very cool, cool op option, and I, I, I implore you all to um, check it out so you can look at uh, the QTEM Master Network because this there gives you an entire second degree. So you end up getting two degrees, one degree from BI and then also the QTEM degree as well. Okay. Next up, we have the business analytics program. So this is the program that I am currently doing. And what actually drew me to this program is because uh, you know, in the last uh, couple of years, I've been working with uh, quite a lot of data. And you know, I just wanted to be more effective at handling it, manipulating it, getting useful information out of it, right? I mean, more and more we see that um, being able to, to work with data is a, a sort of an invaluable skill regardless of which industry you're in. So I think, you know, skills like these aren't undervalued at all. They're very much overvalued in the market currently in that people want people with um, good skills. So I think this here program is a, is a fantastic opportunity to really get into how can you use these mass amount of data that all these companies have on us now currently to, act, to get some kind of actionable uh, business, um, business decision out of it, you know, or, or achieve some goal. So, I mean, just in, in, in general, you know, when you think in analytics, right, it is a sort of means to an end. So we want to achieve, you know, greater business value through superior insights. So this is how you get that insight. So you will learn how to conduct, you know, descriptive, predictive, uh, prescriptive analysis to support and make uh, your business decisions. And you'll also develop sort of these knowledge and skills through close collaboration with um, many of the industry partners that we're fortunate enough to work with. Um, you know, I, I think it's, it's a very, very cool program. We actually, from this year here, uh, entered into a new partnership with SAS. Uh, and they are like one of the largest, most well-known um, well names within the business analytics industry. And I think it's very cool because we get to do certifications through them, as well as get special access to internships here in, um, in Scandinavia with some of their partners. So I think it's, it's, it's a fantastic um, program and you do learn a whole lot in, in so as much as you've learned tools, but also ways to think, ways to infer, and ways to sort of quite get um, and handle large amounts of data and get something useful out of it. Next up, we have the Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program. So this program started uh, this year, and it was started sort of in response to the markets, right? So here in Scandinavia, it's actually a quite, quite a hotbed for um, startups. And we, want, we realized that as more and more students uh, wanted to get into this space, uh, they needed some guidance uh, along the way. So the Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program is, is really a program for those of you who have entrepreneurial skills, have the entrepreneurial mindset, or even if you don't have it just yet, you're really, really interested in it because it really is, is made to kind of help people at all stages. So what, what, you, what you can do in terms of profile is that you can either come in this program and you sort of learn how to deal with, the, with this new startup environment. So there are different startups that are at different stages. So maybe in some cases you, may not, you have your own idea and you want to kind of jump off. Well, this program helps you ju jump off in that direction, gets you on the ground and provides you with a lot of great faculty and mentors to help bring your idea into fruition. Or maybe you don't have, a, have your own idea. Maybe it might come to you. Maybe you might meet a classmate and the two of you all come up with something together. This program is also for those of you who think, okay, yeah, I want to be my own boss. I want to captain my own ship. This here is a good program for you as well because this teaches you how to navigate the industry, how to operate within different stages of the industry. And I think this is how you would get better within this space and ultimately be more successful. So programs like this are, are, are becoming more popular. And I think it's very important because you, you develop this kind of competence that enables you to either develop your own business 
or help a smaller business grow and scale up faster. And you can contribute to this restructuring and innovation in our existing businesses. So you see now a common trend in this part of the world is that you see a lot of um, large companies investing a lot of resources into innovation departments because they understand how critical it is to sort of keep up or be the front runner in terms of technology ideas or just general um, workplace practices. So this is a fantastic program for those of you who really are a bit more innovative of self-starters and really want to test um, the waters out there. The finance program is uh, another fantastic program. It's one of the um, best in Europe, uh, we are proud to say. And this one here is, um, it is affiliated with the uh, CFA. Uh, it is ranked actually in the top 10, I believe, in, in Europe. So I think it's something that we're very proud of. The finance department here, uh, uh, I've worked with uh, many of the professors here and they are fantastically knowledgeable people um, who really push you. Um, it goes without saying that all of, or all of our programs are indeed quite challenging. And I think, you know, as a student, you know, you want that because you want to be pushed. You want to, be, to feel as though you're getting something out of it and you can maximize your potential here. So the, uh, the Master's of Science in Finance, it has a very applied focus. So for example, this program here helps prepare you for the CFA level one exams, for example. So it has a very, very applied focus and it makes sure that it develops both your finance skills as well as your IT and programming skills because more and more these days, these two go pretty much hand in hand. So I think it's very, very, very important that um, when you are considering programs, ensure that it's not just that they have sort of the theory, but make sure that it's also a very much applied program because that is what really translates uh, to the workplace. In terms of um, some of the courses you can expect to do, you have quantitative methods for finance, and here you'll be introduced to MATLAB. I'm not sure how many of you all are familiar with it, but it's pretty much standard across uh, the industry, and you will understand uh, things like applied valuation, investments, corporate finance, I mean, corporate governance. There are many, many facets to it, and I think you've prov it's pro you're provided with a very, very thorough basis. Whether or not you want to continue on in academia, or if you want to actually go straight out into the workforce. The Master's of Science in uh, Leadership and Organizational Psychology is a program that um, definitely provides you with essentially the, the education you need to deal with these big organizational changes. So let me give you an example. You know, you have company A merging with company B, and now in order to get these sort of synergies they imagine they have to get, you have to merge these these um, two cultures, you have to figure out redundant positions, these sort of things. So anytime you have any big organizational restructuring or any organizational uh, processes, you need people with skills that um, are in these areas of organizational change and change management, etc., in order to deal with uh, us, to, in order to give you a smooth transition, right? So this here is the type of program that um, would prepare you for that. Okay, so this program is essentially just to provide you with um, the best knowledge for in terms of environment for the development of knowledgeable and socially responsible HR professionals. And you'll be able to sort of identify necessary changes when it comes to meeting certain organizational goals and ambitions, right? So some of the exciting courses in this program here are something like uh, groups and, and teams where Essentially, you look into, well, how do you actually create a winning team, you know? So then you learn about sort of the psychological processes that affect actual group performance. And I mean, I'm sure right away you all can imagine, well, that would be actually super important for the success of any organization or any project or meeting any goal, right? You have strategic management, and this here focuses on um, the frameworks and concepts that are employed by managers when they make decisions which govern sort of the scope or the direction or even the competitive positioning of organizations. And then last but not least, you have uh, power and uh, persuasion and power in our organization. So this here is, is, a, is this course is all about, you know, why do some attempts to uh, influence 
uh, other people processes? Why do some of these fail? And why do some of these succeed? So I, I think you can grasp from that immediately that it will have a lot of very practical research. So it's you look at the research and then you apply it to actual real life uh, situations. So I think it's a, it's a very exciting um, offer. Strategic marketing management is uh, a very, very, very uh, cool course. It's very popular here, uh, actually. And this program here is not your typical uh, marketing course. So this program here is um, for people who really want to kind of use, uh, who want to work in marketing, but using uh, statistics and uh, analytics to really make and inform their decisions, right? So. I mean, let's just imagine for, for a moment, you know, you are the head of marketing at, um, at Coca-Cola and you're trying to approve, get the board to approve a $100 million budget for, for a global marketing campaign. You can't just say, well, I think this will work, right? They're not going to accept that. So I think when you think of it from that perspective, you know, this program here definitely helps you to sort of get more basis for why your decisions work. So you can you will learn how to actually test or look for um, reasons, uh, empirical reasons as to well, why certain things work or don't work in the, in the marketing sphere. So this would then lead you to be able to build strong brands in the goods and services market and also the financial consequences of, so, of these market investments, right? Because with, with everything that, um, every expenditure within the business context, you do need to look at, well, you know, this is the cost and what is exactly the benefit in this case, right? So you have to be able to take full stock of that to understand, oh, well, does this campaign make sense given the expected return? Uh, some of these um, courses that you, may, you, you will do in this program are, are brand management. So this is sort of understanding how to strategically position and grow a brand. Uh, so essentially, yeah, could you build the next Apple or Coca-Cola or, or Facebook, for example? You, you need to understand, you have understanding the consumer. So this is getting you know, insight into consumer behavior, essentially answering the question, well, what makes uh, people buy? And then you have strategic management which um, you would learn to sort of analyze, you know, the different um, markets and situations strategically and get, essentially get familiar with, with what it's like to, to think as a top level executive. So I think this program would really position you well. And um, actually starting uh, this upcoming um, year here, we will be offering a joint um, master of science degree in marketing with Louise. So Louis is a, is a is a is one of our partner schools in uh in uh, I believe it's Rome, Italy, and so essentially what you do is you do your first year with us, and then you do your your second year at Louis, and when you're done, through this joint program you get two master's degrees. So you get the strategic marketing management degree that I just spoke about, as well as a, a master of science in marketing from Louise. So essentially you get to experience two different fields and how different countries might approach um, marketing. So I think this multicultural experience only enriches your, ed your education and you're sort of able to see and understand different differences. And I mean, that is increasingly important as more and more workplaces are quite international, right? And especially when you're dealing with marketing, I think it, 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 it's just better to have a broader context from which you, you can um, base your decisions. The MSc in quantitative finance is for those of you who really, really, really love mathematics and statistics. It is a very, very challenging program, but what it does is it sets you up to really excel in um, the quantitative finance sphere. So these guys who you see sitting in the back rooms at hedge funds coming up with different equations for modeling um, stochastic volatility, this is the program that you would want to take, right? So this here is really what you get to 
um, you, you get to focus on both the quantitative and the programming um, aspects aspect of you know, numerical analysis, stochastic modeling, uh, econometrics, and then how to apply these tools to be able to analyze very complex financial instruments or analyze very data sets for information, for example, right? And this would help you either measure risk or make forecasts. So I think it's a very, very powerful um, powerful weapon to have as you enter the workforce and it will definitely make you a competitive candidate to come out with a, a degree in quantitative finance. So it is sort of a higher level than uh, our plain finance degree. That plain first finance or first finance degree is more of a general type of um, type finance degree. This one here really goes a bit deeper into um, some of the more complex um, financial instruments out there and the modeling processes behind them. So you will have courses such as um, quantitative risk management, where you'll learn about fundamental issues uh, in risk management, um, in risk modeling and, and management in general in, in finance. You have computational methods that would help you understand um, insight into the different computational methods for, well, whether it be pricing and hedging um, of these com complex financial instruments. And you have derivatives. I'm sure we've all heard the, the word derivatives. So you get a thorough understanding of sort of the workings and more importantly, the pricings of um, derivative securities. So you can't go wrong there if this is your interest. So for this program here, you should definitely have strong math and statistics background. So now we've talked at length about um, some of the programs there. Congrats to all of those who who are still with me, because I know it's a lot of information to um, take in, right? So again, I just wanted to give you all a taste of sort of what we have to offer. But in terms of our possibilities here, I think that's one of the really th the cool things about BI. It stands out in that regard, in that you have exchange possibilities. All of our master's programs have internship opportunities as well. So you get a chance to not only get practical work experience, but practical work experience right here in Norway. So you get to experience a different work, work culture. And I think that is very informative as well, right? So in terms of decisions, you know, may, maybe you want to stay here or maybe you want to try somewhere else. Available for those of you who want to, again, go to other partner schools during the summer and take a couple courses as well. That is also an opportunity for you. Here at BI, we have a ton of societies, different interests. As I said, we have uh, 20,000 students and 12,000 of them are right here on the Oslo campus. So, I mean, we have huge, huge, huge uh, numbers of um, student associations and organizations, both academic and social, you know, athletic, etc. So I really think that you can find something that uh, or some club that you are interested in and be able to um, be with people outside of the classroom, which I mean, honestly, it is necessary, right? You, you work hard all week. Uh, so I think it's nice to be able to sort of relax and do other things of interest. You do have uh, the Master Merit Society. So really good, our, our top students, they all get invited to be members of the society. And what this allows is that you get actually more face time with employers. We have a number of fantastic partners, some of the largest companies here in Norway, actually. And um, we do get this opportunity to meet with them, talk with them, a lot of events, a lot of mentoring. So you do get set up for that next phase in your career. Career guidance, speaking of career, we have a fantastic career center. They help you with absolutely uh, everything from taking picture, taking uh, professional pictures for your LinkedIn profiles to CVs, practicing for interviews, writing of cover letters. They really, really are a fantastic resource that um, you would be able to utilize pretty much from day one here as a student of BI and after you are finished uh, uh, as a student here at BI, as an alumni. So I think it's definitely a lot of value there. And the last but not least, you have study guidance for all the courses. You have teaching assistants, learning assistants who are able to help you work through the problems. We want you to succeed in these courses and to clear anything that might be uh, unclear. In terms of uh, student life here at BI, as I said, we have a ton of activities. So we have an entire orientation week. So it's literally a week that's just dedicated towards getting you used to BI, getting you to meet and talk to your classmates, 
you know, you all get to do a whole bunch of stuff together, um, different challenges and case case solving and, and just pretty much integrate you. And also we try to, as much as possible, get you used to Norway, your new surroundings, your new home. Uh, I think it's very good because it does sort of break the ice and it, you kind of lose a bit of the anxiety of, you know, moving to a brand new place and not having any, anyone. I know it was absolutely integral for me when I just came here to have this sort of week just to get to know people and in a more relaxed setting. Uh, the career fair is actually quite big. You know, I mean, this, as I mentioned before, BI is uh, the top business school here in Norway. Um, and because of this, all the top companies come to us. So from your Googles to Microsoft, IBM, you know, uh, Toyota, L'Oreal, you know, biggest companies, you know, all the big four consultancies, McKinsey, BCG, all these companies come here to us to recruit our students. And I think that bodes well for you guys, you know, in terms of getting a lot of face time with students. They are all, also all our, or a lot of our uh, corporate partners, they come and have um, presentations in-house. So they actually come and have events here where they tell you about the company, tell you about what it's like working at, working as a consultant or working as an analyst here at these various companies and also, you know, get to have a bit of informal chat with them so that you can get a sense of what it's like, you know, because remember when you're choosing an employer, it's not just that, you know, they evaluating you, but you should also evaluate them, you know, make sure that the fit is sort of mutual, right? Uh, that is really important, I think, for work-life happiness. Uh, we have a uh, Binner, which is really cool. It's a free emphasis on free themed um, dinner every once every month. Uh, this is really cool because it gets a lot of Norwegian and international students to just kind of come sit down and share a meal. And, you know, I think it helps to build the network. It's really relaxed. And of course, you know, it, it's free. So, I mean, you could never go wrong with free food, I think. Uh, the case competition is really cool because you do have this opportunity to uh, compete against students from around the world because it is um, you do get uh, teams from not just Scandinavia but uh, uh, from North America as well and it's an opportunity to really sort of shine because you have a lot of our corporate partners there and I mean it looks fantastic on your CV and of course we have uh, the Dean's List which which um, is for students who average an A within a semester they get also a special commendation letter um, so that is also added plus something else to add on to your CV to make you look like a very attractive uh, candidate. So now, I mean, in terms of uh, the graduates, graduates from BI, like what, what has been sort of their success rate? So 80% of all of our international students, they secured um, work within six months of graduating. So that's fantastic. Uh, 50, 53%, so just over half, actually had a job offer even before they graduated. Just think of the peace of mind that you have knowing that, oh, I don't have to fight for a job at the end of this program or be uncertain as to what my next move is. Half, half of our students are, already have that sorted out before they even graduate, right? In general, 83% were satisfied with the job that they got and actually six out of 10 graduates actually chose to work in Norway. So that's six out of 10. So the possibilities are there for those of you who choose to stay here, right? And I think this is something that I think is um should be underlined a bit because uh it is not i think in many other countries you know whether it be us or canada it's, it's a bit more challenging to kind of stay there after graduation to work uh it actually is quite easy relatively speaking i think in norway once you've secured a job uh to, to be able to live and work here afterwards. So I think it's always great when you're looking at uh, master's programs to sort of have that option in the back of your mind because ultimately the country in which you study, that is where that school will have the strongest ties, right? So which means it will have the strongest ties in terms of work, the uh, work market as well. So that is always something to consider. Um, as mentioned before, our alumni network is quite uh, large and growing. So we are, uh, as I said, the second largest uh, business school in Europe. So we have about 85,000 alumni worldwide. Now, this is 85,000 people who've done the full-time programs. If we look at uh, people who've done all programs, that number is actually well over 200,000. So again, we have a quite large alumni network. So you always connected and we have a lot of events that 
um, happened around the world. So you could just follow us on social media and you'd be able to hear about when we met it up, either it be in Italy or France or New York, uh, Germany, et cetera. Like, we have all these events to co connect prospective students with students who've actually gone there. So, I mean, I think this is something to definitely look, up, look out for. Now, in terms of uh, the practical information, so the cost of living um, on average is around 14,000 um, US uh, dollars per year or 12,000 euro. Uh, this, is, this is, I think, is quite reasonable given that you're here for a full year. I think one of the perceptions is that, you know, it's super expensive here in Norway, and I'm not going to tell you that it's cheap, but what I think is that it's much more affordable than people probably realize, especially as a student. So, I'll give you a simple example. As a student, I, for a monthly or yearly metric card, I would pay 40% less than the actual price. And you have all of these, um, these discounts throughout society in stores and everywhere that you do get these student deals on pretty much everything. So I think that is something that is definitely um, a big initiative of the Norwegian government that they want to make it more um, affordable for students to choose um, Norway as their, um, their place of study. In terms of your actual study permit, so for those of you who don't have EU citizenship and would require a student visa or, or study permit as it's known here, this is a quite easy and straightforward process. You do everything uh, online and then you go to your local uh, consulate to deliver the documents. And um, with that, you are allowed to work up to 20 hours per week, uh, which, is a, which is a fantastic deal. And uh, I think uh, in general, work here is quite straightforward to find part-time work. You can find work right here on campus. I myself found a uh, student assistant job right here on campus, which is very convenient because I don't have to leave the building to go to work or to go to class. Uh, and there are a lot of positions like this, whether it be student assistant positions or research assistant positions or outside of campus, you have a lot of like um, uh, so, so, Servant positions, for example, you know, working in bars, cafes, this is something that is very common amongst uh, international students, as well as those of you who have um, professional, uh, some professional experience, maybe you can also have, uh, you could probably find a part-time job within a company, because English more and more is becoming sort of the language of um, of business here in Norway. The academic year essentially runs, as I said, you know, it's broken up into to two parts so you have the fall semester august to december and you have the january to june uh semester so it's quite uh straightforward now in terms of housing one of the good things about it we understand that this is quite difficult we guarantee housing for all our international students so once you let us know before may 1st that you are coming and you'd like housing, we'll be able to show you options. You tell us what you would like, what your budget is like, and we'll find housing for you. This is something that we guarantee, right? So all the housings are located off, ca off campus, so there's no actual housing within the, uh, the school itself, but it's within like five to seven minutes walk away. So it has a number of housing locations right around the campus. So that makes it, I uh, think, very easy to commute. You can literally walk here or or take the bus a couple stops, for example. Uh, and this is extends to both Oslo and Bergen. As, as I said, once you do it before May, by May 1st, you will be guaranteed housing. After May 1st, we will still attempt to find you housing, but I'm afraid we won't be able to guarantee it, right? But in most cases, actually, every year we do find housing for everyone. So don't fear, just let us know as early as possible. Now, tuition fee, I think um, if you look at um, some of the other programs that you may be considering, whether it be US, Canada, UK, for example, you'd realize that our tuition fee is actually quite good. So it's around 11,000 uh, US dollars or just over 10,000 10, euro. So I think that is sort of the offset you have in that. Okay, maybe the living costs might be slightly higher, but then you pay significantly less tuition. So I remember, for example, when I was studying uh, studying in the U.S., the yearly tuition was around thirty-seven thousand U.S. dollars. Luckily for me, I had a scholarship. But just to kind of compare the difference in price level, I think uh, is, is important for when you consider it all the financial aspects of of this really big decision, right? Uh, the only difference here is. Uh, in the, for the business analytics program, it's a little bit more costly. So that will be 12,000 US dollars or 10, almost 11, just under 11,000 euro. 
the tuition for the uh, joint program that starts uh, next year. So as I said, you do the first year with us and the second year with Louise. So the first year, it's about 110,000 kroners. So it's not far from what, we, what you would have paid um, during the regular master's program here. And then your second year, it's 12,700 uh, euro that is paid uh, to Louise. Now, I know this is a probably an important part for many of you. Um, we do have a quite generous um, scholarship program. So we have essentially three types of scholarships available. So we have the Presidential Scholarship, the Master of Science International Scholarship, and the A. William Hel Wilhelmson uh, Foundation Scholarship. So I'll just run you through the, um, the three of them. So the BI uh, Presidential Scholarship, uh, well, let's start actually from the bottom and go up. The Wilhelmson Scholarship is a foundation-based scholarship whereby they cover, I think they give you something like 150,000 uh, Norwegian kroner per year or so to, for, for your studies. Uh, so this is a fantastic opportunity to get um, not just, not just um, so your tuition covered, but some of your living expenses as well. The Master of Science Scholarship. Uh, this scholarship varies. So the lowest level Master of Science International Scholarship is one year of full tuition, uh, all the way up to the highest level, which is two years of full tuition, right? And what you can get is one year full tuition, and then they give you also different levels of stipends in addition to it. And then you have this, our top level scholarship, you know, that for, for the really excellent students that, that apply, that um, includes um, two years full tuition, as well as you get um, a, living, a living grant over the course of the two years to cover your personal expenses. So I think it's a really, really good um, opportunity. And uh, there are quite a number of, of scholarships available for students. So I encourage all of you when you apply to apply for the scholarships as well. And one of the good things is that if you're applying for the BI Presidential Scholarship or the Master of Science, Science International Scholarship, you only need to write one scholarship letter for it. You do have to write a separate one if you are applying for the Williamson uh, Foundation Scholarship. So that's just something to bear in mind. And all of this is just uploaded to the online portal. In terms of the admission requirements to all these various uh, programs that I spoke about, uh, we look for a 3.5 on the ECTS scale, right? Uh, so this is about like a B or so on the uh, on the, the US GPA scale, for example, uh, you need a GMAT of 600 or GRE of, in with scores in the quantitative of the 152 or verbal 158. You also need to, sh to, show, to show us um, IELTS or TOEFL to satisfy the English language requirement. And this, you require 6.5 in the IELTS or 90 in the, uh, the TOEFL. Right? And most importantly, of course, you need to have completed uh, an undergraduate bachelor's degree from an, uh, a higher edu education institution that is accredited. And, you need to, and this program needs to be a minimum of uh, three years. Okay? Now, there are certain exemptions um, that do come into play. So, for example, if you're coming from one of our partner schools, then that would waive the GMAT, GMAT requirement, for example. Or if you've studied previously in English, so let's say you've done your bachelor's degree in the United States, for example, and did at least two years of higher education in English, that would also waive the English language requirements, namely the IELTS and TOEFL test scores. In terms of the documents that you would need, so of course you need copies of all your transcripts and diplomas, your motivation letter, CV, financial plan, copy of your passport, right? And the deadline for, the, for application is, Mar the priority deadline is March 1st. Now when I say priority deadline, I, mean, I, 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 I think that it's important to kind of underline, we do accept applications afterwards, However, the priority deadline, also the scholarship deadline, is March 1st. So we like to just kind of make sure that that date is stuck in people's minds, March 1st. So get your applications in prior to March 1st, right? It's all easy and intuitive. The uh, portal is open right now, so you can just apply. And it's at this stage, you actually only need to upload PDFs and scans of all your documents to have them processed. So, I mean, why Norway? I mean, largely, like, I feel as though some of the things that I was looking for, you know, I, I wanted the place to be safe. 
Um, I think Norway excels at that. It's probably one of the safest cities, uh, safest countries in the world. Honestly, you know, there's no stress for uh, anyone walking late at night or, you know, it's a very, very well-run society. Uh, it's a very, very stable economy, which I think is, which I think matters a great deal when it comes to job opportunities afterwards, as well as the kind of level of quality of life that you could expect if you choose to, to live here, study here, etc. Um, employment is very low here. Here in uh, Scandinavia, and in particular in Norway, there is a big push on sustainability. It's one of the pillars, actually, of um, BI. So everything is try kind of geared towards, you know, reducing, reusing, recycling. Uh, I think that is very important. You know, the environment uh, is one of the big selling points of Norway, I think. You know, nature is, fun, is really, really important to everyone here. And I think the more the focus towards actually taking care of that is um, very, very high here. So if that is important to you, I definitely think this year is a part of the world you should um, look at. Uh, I put happiness index there. And the reason I put happiness index there is because I remember growing up, I would always see um, Norway like at or near the top of the world happiness index. You know, I never quite understood what they were doing so special. And I, I'm like, I am happy to say that having been here, I could see why, you know. Life is very comfortable here. Uh, I think in general, um, Despite, despite, you know, it can be cold in the winter, you know, we can't escape that fact. Um, I think what um, Norwegians do really well is they make use of all the seasons, you know. So if it's sunny, they're out and sunbathing. If it's, if it's um, snowing, you know, they're out and skiing. So if you're an outdoors, outdoorsy type person, I think you definitely would uh, fit in here. And one of the good things uh, about uh, Scandinavia, and in particular Norway, is that English is very widely spoken. So you, I don't think um, you'll meet any Norwegians that genuinely struggle with English, which is amazing for a second language. I think it's largely because they start with English when they're quite young, around five years old or so. So they are just, everyone is very good in English. Um, you know, uh, I'll give you a, a simple comparison. Like when I travel to Germany, for example, and I put on local TV, even if I'm watching uh, an American TV show, the language has been dubbed, for example, that wouldn't happen here because uh, everyone is so good in English, they can just leave it um, in the original, with the original actors' voices. So, I mean, just stuff like that, I think, makes it a lot easier to kind of integrate into society, you know. I do think it's, it's valuable to learn, um, learn the language or try to, try to learn it. I think, you know, if you went in Rome, as they say, yeah, I think it's a cool opportunity and the BI does offer um, courses for you to be able to start to learn uh, some of the language uh, if you so desire. So there is that option as well. But I think it's also comforting to know that, oh, well, in order for me to survive, I don't absolutely have to learn uh, the language. And I mean, like, I think for me, the biggest selling point is just the city itself. It is a really beautiful city, a nice mix of modern and old. Uh, I think the Norwegian government does a really good job of kind of ensuring that um, funds flow back into the public and you constantly see where your tax dollars go in. It's not just sort of disappearing into, into thin air as, we, as you might see in other countries. Uh, you do feel that oh, it's progressively getting better. You know, public, public transportation is fantastic. Uh, the offerings is fantastic. And as I said, like, our campus is a beautiful campus. Uh, it is actually designed by um, the same architect that designed the Oslo airport. So if you ever come in through there and look up, you'd, you'd see a, a nice mix of um, the same wood and glass and steel uh, that you see there. And uh, I think what this campus does really well is that uh, it really lets in a lot of light. So you don't actually get this um, in a building all day feeling because as you can see right down the center of the atrium there it's, it is actually an entire glass roof and that runs both left and right and up and down so it brings in a lot of natural light so you do sort of feel like you're in the city within a city and there are like balconies and stuff within the building itself so it takes up an entire city block uh, and this is a, just a look at um, sort of inside and as I said it's a lot of natural light that comes in so I think it's really beautiful every time of uh every time a year. And I mean, just in general, Oslo is a, is a nice city to live in. It's quite international, maybe a bit more international than people might initially uh, assume. Uh, but yeah, there are a lot of people from all over the world are moving to 
to Oslo largely because it's a great place to live, a very strong economy, and they are open and welcoming to talented individuals. So it has a big demand for, for um, talented workers, and a lot of people from around the world are stepping up to satisfy that demand and getting all the benefits of living in this society. And I mean, the biggest selling point, of course, is just, you know, Norway is just breathtakingly beautiful, you know, trips around um, to the western side of, western side of Norway, north, north Norway, you know, you could go, um, go up and see the northern lights, for example. It's really magical stuff, you know, bucket list stuff, I would say. So it's definitely a lot of weekend trips that you could do, a lot of opportunity to see things that you would not get to see um, anywhere else. I mean, it, it does sometimes feel like it's a bit of a fairy tale. I mean, so that's sort of my soft pitch in terms of why I choose and why I love um, Norway. I do encourage you all to follow us um, on social media. You know, if you want more experiences and get a bit of insight, uh, we do have uh, the Life at BI Instagram account as well as the Life at BI blog. The Life at BI blog is really cool because what we do on the blog is actually have our international students write about different topics that are, are of interest to them. That, so this is what they experience when it comes to this and this. So I think you get a lot of tips and um, you, just, you get a better sense of what it's like to actually be like uh, an international student here on campus. So I encourage you guys to check us out uh, on the various forms of social media. And I mean, just in general, I'm a, I think um, that is pretty much it for me. So 